Acts chapter 10, verse 44. Just going to use one verse. It says, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them, watch this, which heard the word. My testimony tonight, uh, today is, fall on me. <laughs> Let me, can I preach to me? Y'all can come in if you want it, but I, I'll preach to me, Deacon Lynch. As I, as I, as I read this scripture, Bobby, um, my mind <clears throat> went to other places in the Bible where the power of God fell. Deacon Manjurl in first uh, uh, looked at uh, it, 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 David made an altar to the Lord and he called upon the Lord and God answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. In 2 Chronicles, Solomon had made a, a great sacrifice to the Lord when he had made an end of praying the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. Deacon Darren Brown, there was also undeniable and indisputable, irrefutable, visible, tangible manifestations of the power of God. Elijah squared off with Ahab, Deacon Lemier, and the false prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. The false prophets and the man of God, Elijah, had come to an agreement that they would both build an altar and offer a sacrifice, but put no fire under it. And they would call on their respective gods and the God that answered by fire, he would be God. Uh, Deacon Bull and the false prophets, uh, they, they built their altar and they, they laid the sacrifice on it and, and they called on Baal from uh, morning till noon. But there weren't no answer. And Elijah began to mock them, and, and then they got, they, they got an attitude and got violent. And they went into a frenzy and, and began to jump on the altar, and, and they, they, they got so radical, they start cutting themselves with knives. Y'all read the Bible and, 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 and lancets until the blood began to gush out of their veins. And, and they continued, uh, yes, until uh, the evening sacrifice. And they made all that noise and then Elijah took over. And the Bible says that he repaired uh, the altar that was broken and he put the wood in order and put the sacrifice on the wood. And then he had them pour uh, 12 barrels of water on the sacrifice. And then he did what we did early this morning, he prayed. He, the Bible said he prayed a, a 63 word prayer and the Bible says then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and the Bible says and it licked up the water the fire licked up the water that was in the trench and when the people saw it they and the Bible said they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, <laughs> he is the God. He is the God. Uh, the fact is what happened on that mountain, Auntie Ruby, was so powerful and so undeniable that it, it turned a nation back to God. That's what I'm saying to some of y'all who come in here so starchy and so quiet. You don't know who's paying attention to you. And because of your experience and your encounter with God, you might just call somebody to turn their backs back to God. 
Help me somebody. What they experienced was a visible, tangible manifestation of the power of God. They had, uh, Brother Henry, a God encounter. Uh, they experienced the fire of God. They experienced the power of God that fell on that mountain and on that altar and on that sacrifice. And then my mind, uh, Deacon Darren, goes to Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. If you read your Bibles, it says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, uh, they were all, watch this, on one accord. They weren't all over Oakland, but they were in one place. And then verse 2 says, and suddenly, look at your neighbor and say, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing, I don't know what your Bible says, mighty wind. And it said it filled all the house, watch this, where they were sitting. And then I got excited in verse 3 and it says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat, watch this, upon each one of them. Didn't miss nobody. It sat on him. It sat on her. It sat on her. It sat on her. It sat on her. It sat on him. Watch this. And they were filled, I wish I had, with the Holy Ghost. Uh, I ain't in no Kojic church. I think this is a Baptist church, but the word was talking to all of us. He said they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And watch this and watch this. Watch some of y'all hating on the word. He says, and they began to speak uh, with other tongues as the spirit, not what Pastor Payton was saying, but the spirit gave them utterance first the holy ghost then tongues and then the spirit begins to speak first of all fire got to fall on me if you want to change fire got to fall on you talk back to me if you can the fire of god fell on david's altar I tell you, I was tired as I didn't want to, didn't want to preach. They just wanted to rest. Told Hopkins, you're going to preach. But the Holy Ghost said, no, it's your turn. And when fire falls on you, you'll gain strength. Help me, somebody. The fire of God fell on David's altar. The fire of God fell on Solomon's offering. The fire of God fell on Mount Carmel. The Holy Ghost fire fell on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost fire fell in the house of Cornelius. And in every case, whether it be the Old or the New Testament, it was a visible. Help me somebody. Don't sit here and tell me I was on fire and I can't see no evidence. Anybody that's caught on fire, you're going to see some evidence. Don't sit here like you all cute. Talking about I'm on fire for God and you ain't no movement. It was a visible, tangible, undeniable manifestation of the fire of God. Sister Sharon Brown, what really concerns me today about the modern day church is we are raising a generation of Christians who have never had a God encounter. Talk back to me if you will. They have never experienced a tangible, undeniable manifestation of the power of God. Thank you for asking, Henry. They know God in theory. They know God religiously. They know about God mentally. They know about God intellectually. But they've never had a Mount Carmel fire or a day of Pentecost fire or a house of Cornelius encounter. 
fire by God. They've never, and I could tell by your actions, they've never had a burning bush experience. I ain't talking about Henry and Sonia. I'm talking about a Holy Ghost burning. Help me somebody. Uh, yes, they, they've never experienced the power of the Holy Ghost seizing them. Taking them. Taking full control of them. They've never experienced the supernatural fire of God burning in their hands and in their feet. So many people, Sister Brand, in this generation today, this, uh, the fire of God is just a concept. It's just an idea. But I'm on assignment this morning to tell you that the fire of God is not just a concept. It's not an idea, Brother Stephen, or a philosophy to be studied. It's not the figment of an overactive imagination. It's not, yes, just rambling religious jargon. The fire of God is the mighty Holy Ghost fire. Talk back to me if you will. He is the third person of the Godhead. He is the mighty and the power and the presence and the glory of God. Can I talk more? He is the same fire that fell on Mount Carmel. He is the same fire that fell on the day of Pentecost. He is the same fire that fell in the Cornelius house. He is the same fire of God. This fire is real. This fire of God is alive. This fire of God is contagious. I wish I had some help. You can't be on fire on your road and everybody on your world is looking dead if you catch on fire somebody else will catch on fire ah! the fire of God is the power of God y'all better help me preach I'm feeling something already you see let me help you let me help you sister Marilyn the power of God is the only power that can heal uh huh. That that somebody. Let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. Sister Jamila, I said the power of God is the only power that can heal. Doctors can cut out disease parts, but doctors can't heal. Doctors can give you a prescription, but I wish I had some help. Doctors can't heal. Yes, can administer radiation. They can administer uh, chemo. But even then, the body suffers from their harmful side effects. But the fire of God, the fire of God can burn cancer out of your body. Talk back to me if you can. Yes, and never leave a trace, never leave a scar, or any harmful side effects. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. The fire. I'm out of here, y'all. The fire of God can burn drugs out of your system. Help me somebody. And take the desire at the same time. The fire of God can burn alcohol out of your system and take the taste bud at the same time. The fire.
fire of God can restore missing body parts. Talk back to me if you can. The fire of God can deliver you from drugs, from alcohol, from lust, from pornography, from perversion. The fire of God, watch this, can burn up jealousy, can burn up pride, can burn up criticism, can burn up bitterness, can burn up anger, can burn up unforgiveness. The fire of God can heal a broken heart. The fire of God. And restore what are you saying Pastor Payne the fire of God can restore joy it can restore peace but not only in you but it can restore peace in your house peace in your family the power of God can save your lost son the power of God can restore your family together again let me help you I don't know who I'm talking to but here's your answer the fire of God can heal your marriage you don't want to say nothing because you don't want nobody to know that your family is tore up and your marriage is tore up from the flow up but I'll stop by to tell you God fire can heal your marriage somebody ought to help me I'm getting ready to go out there somebody ought to say God do it again St. John I need you to say it God do it again in St. John if you really mean it if you really want God to do it again in St. John I need St. John to holler back at your boy and say God do it again in St. John God let your fire fall on us fall on us fall on me Fall on my heart. If you mean it, look for it. If you mean it, open your heart. Say, God, follow me. Let it fall. Let the fire fall. The same fire, Kathy, that fell on the day of Pentecost. The same fire that fell on the Gentiles in Cornelius' house. Say it again. Do it again, Lord. <laughs> it's in the Word. Do it again. You see, it won't fall until you, first of all, believe. First of all, have faith that if he did it before, he can do it again. This ain't your first rodeo. He restored me before. He can do it again. And watch this. So, Satina, you don't have to wait till tomorrow. But the word of God said, suddenly, ain't nobody helping me. Ain't nobody happy but me. I believe that suddenly his fire can fall in this house. Not tomorrow, not after the message, but he can fall on us right now. Who's ready? Who's ready? Who's ready? Who wants it? Who wants it? Who wants it? Say it again. Fire! Fire! 
fall on me. Lord, I want you to come forcibly. I want you to come powerfully. Help me somebody. See, everybody don't want that. Because when it comes, a change got to happen. Stuff have to, you're going to have to lose some stuff. You're going to have to stop doing some stuff. Because he comes with power. Rush in on us. <laughs> Rush in on us. They, they didn't know when it was coming, but when it came, it came like a mighty move of God. Not only do I want you to rush in on us, I want you to seize us. <laughs> Take possession of us. See, some of you got an orchestrated praise, but I don't want no orchestrated praise. I want my praise to come suddenly. When I begin to think, immediately I begin to praise. You don't have to tell me when to clap my hands. You don't have to tell me to turn around three times. Suddenly, the power of God makes me move. You got to get to the point, Demetrius, that you begin to say to yourself, I'm not satisfied just reading about it. <laughs> I'm not satisfied just singing about it. I want to experience it for myself. I don't want what just what Pastor Peyton keep telling us. I want an experience for myself. I want to know you as a healer. I want to know you as a provider. I want to know you as a deliverer. Can I tell you what Jesus said? Jesus says, ye shall receive power. Somebody holler back, say after. That the Holy Ghost come upon you. You can't receive power by your theory. You're not going to receive power until the Holy Ghost come first. He says, tarry ye. Some time in order to get it, you're going to have to wait on it. You're going to have to get through some stuff. You can't go around it. You're going to have to go through some pain. You're going to have to go through some brokenness. You're going to have to go through some lonely periods. He says, just tarry ye. Tarry ye. Until you are endued with power from on high. This power is not going to come from the devil. This power is not going to come from the doctor. This power is not going to come from a bottle or weed or anything else. This power is coming from on high. I'm out of here, y'all. I said, I'm out of here. The power, again, is not a theory. This power, y'all gonna have to stop walking on me. I'm talking to somebody. I said, I don't need no distractions. You're gonna have to listen because God is in this house and God is speaking. And the people of God, you're gonna have to get serious about your word. This power is not a concept. This power is the same power that caused the sun and the moon to stand still. It's the same power that divided the Red Sea. It's the same power that caused water to flow out of a rock like a river. It's the same power 
that made the three Hebrew children become fireproof. It's the same power that gave Daniel lion jock lock jaw. It's the same power that shook Paul and Silas prison off of its foundations. It's the same power that was upon Jesus' life when he walked around here on earth. It's the same power that opened blinded eyes, unstopped deaf ears, made the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. It's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. It's the same power. It's the same fire. It's the same anointing. It's the same power that God wants to send on your life right now. He fell on all of them who heard. Somebody say heard. It fell on them when they heard the word. Don't let nothing distract you. The word of God will usher you to an anointing, to a power. It's the same word that kept you from falling. It's the same word that made you not knock that Negro out. It's the same word that kept you from cussing, that kept you from giving up. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God wants to fall on your life. He wants to manifest his glory in your life. He said, ask. You got to ask for it. Say, God, fall on me. Fire, fall on me. And watch this. When you come to church, you got the hunger for it. You got the thirst for it. You got to crave for it. Don't let nobody keep you from getting the word tell them to shut up the word is being preached tell them to sit down the word is being preached don't be no distraction because anything that works with God he don't use you to distract somebody else from getting this power you got to hunger for it you got to be a magnet you got to stick to it you got to hunger because when you hunger you draw his anointing hunger for it will open doors for the manifestation of the power of God am I talking to anybody who's hungry for the power of God is there anybody that's hungry for the presence of God is there anybody that's hungry for a touch from God help me anybody is there anybody not satisfied with religion but I need his anointing I'm not satisfied with tradition I need his fire I'm not satisfied with concepts with theories with philosophies am I talking to anybody who wants his power is there anybody want the fire of the pentacles to fall on you thank you God I believe somebody is hungry I believe somebody is thirsty I believe somebody listening to me you refuse to be satisfied you refuse to be pacified with anything less than a personal y'all don't want this a personal encounter with the almighty God somebody is getting ready to catch on fire somebody is getting ready to be hit by the power of God somebody I said somebody is getting ready to be seized your life is getting ready to be taken over by the power of God somebody God is coming like a consuming fire somebody God is coming with a consuming anointing somebody God's getting ready to take 
take over your life, to take over your family, to take over your finance, to take over your health, to take over your job, to take over your sons, to take over your daughters, to take over your wife, to take over your husband. Somebody, God's getting ready to take over this church. His anointing is going to fall on the heart and the minds of his people. God's fire is getting ready to take over. You ought to shout because God is getting ready to take over. God is getting ready to take over this country, take over this election, take over the White House, to take over City Hall, to take over the police, to take over black matters, minds. God, God's fire, fall.